I am okay, you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, hello, Odil. How are you? I, I, by the way, I, I must apologize, but uh, I had difficulties at the beginning of the session, and uh, I didn't introduce anybody. But uh, I, I think everybody knows the three of you, so no, we can save I some uh, some minutes, <laughs> some minutes. Unless Odil, Odil, would you like me to to make a brief presentation of you? Okay. Okay. It'll yeah, take me a few I, I minutes. Have to, I have to do it. No, I don't do it. I have to do it myself? No. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, we, as I said before, we, we, we know the three of you. We know, we, everybody knows them. Ah, okay, so you, <laughs> don't to to you don't want to... Go other. ahead, Odile. Okay. So, uh, on which button I push? So, Joseph comes to me, add me. <laughs> I need help to start. Which one? Did you start? Yeah. You press that? Okay. Okay. So I have to share. Yes. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Um, can now see your application. Okay. Perfect. So, um, so good, good, good afternoon, everybody. I don't know if that it's afternoon for everyone. I'm sure that this is morning, night, or whatever. So, because it seems to be very international. So, hello to everybody. And, um, uh, if everybody knows me, maybe they don't know the way I'm thinking, maybe not all. So this is why I want to express something about what is, what is for me architecture thinking. For me, um, I have, um, since I have started a new school of architecture, since I'm teaching since more than 30 years now, from now, and, uh, and I'm uh, working as an architect since nearly 40 years or so. Um, I think that uh, architecture is, has, um, has been reduced to, the field of architecture has been reduced to uh, just a professional way of thinking. That means designing building and only that. And I think that uh, architecture is much more than that. Because if you think a little bit about what is architecture and how we practice architecture, how, what, how we use architecture, this is a, um, a field where uh, you can, uh, we can, we have to integrate all different, many, many different disciplines to, at the beginning of the research that we are doing when we start a project, whatever the size of the project, whatever the kind of project we are doing, even if architecture, design, landscape, uh, urban planning, uh, um, uh, strategies for somebody, etc. We have to integrate many, many disciplines and mostly all. When we have a question, we have to answer to question of ecology, uh, sociology, philosophy, design, art, um, uh, economy, uh, geology, geography, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is this is why it's very complex. This is why architecture is so complex. And at the same time, this is why after having using or practicing or being educated in architecture, our our way of thinking is particular because we have to do the, from the, all these fields, we have to do a synthesis depending on the questions that have been asked to us and the problems that we are facing. And this is, uh, and we have to do, and from this synthesis, we can make a proposal. And this proposal uh, uh, have to be, has to be able to be, um, to be correct or to be efficient uh, from the very large scale to the very little one, to the very smaller one. So this is why it's so particular and this is why we are, too much reduced of only designing building, and this is what I don't like. And for me, architecture is really more than that. And this is why I started when I established my new school of architecture seven years ago now, uh, that to speak about architecture thinking, which is very different than for me only design thinking, which is too reducing. And uh, this is, and the image that I show you at the first at the beginning, it's an image of, of the it's a picture of uh, the horizon that I have in front of me when I go to my place in Brittany where, where I, I have a place to rest. And uh, this horizon line is, um, is for me, now traveling to the horizon line is for me exactly as doing a project. I explain, when you travel to the horizon line, when you are selling, when you are a seller, you have to, to define a point somewhere on this horizon line. And some, this, on this image, there is something on the horizon, but sometimes, so, most of uh, most of us there is nothing, and uh, only some clouds above the sea. 
and you have to define this point and to negotiate to go there, to negotiate with the wind, with the currents, with the sun, with all the elements of that is happening in the, in the environment of the sea, sea, sky, etc., and climate, and you have to, and this negotiation is exactly the same that what we have to do when we start a project with architecture. And this, we, we make a point and we navigate and we go there, this is adventure. And when we reach that point that was defined before, we know that this point is not anymore on the horizon line because the horizon line is in front of us again and much more far. And this is why I always say that when I stop a project, when I send a project, when I fin finish a project, I start the new adventure to go again to the horizon line. And I, I start to create a new adventure. So my presentation is not in order of project. It's just by, no, this is not that. I can't believe that. I did a mistake. Okay, but I do fast. So I can start with this, with this boat that I designed. I, don't, well, I, designed, I didn't design the hall, but I designed the deck, I designed the entire, I designed everything. Now, 15 years ago, I was not supposed, I don't understand why I have that at the beginning. Excuse me, there is a mistake somewhere. Okay, but this is it. So I practice many things. I'm not limited in architecture by architecture and building. I do, I, I totally open mind and go everywhere. So I can design both, I, as you see before. I do also some art pieces and this is uh, a charity that done with Vitra where uh, they send to, the, to some designers, architects, uh, artists, objects from Vitra collection. And we have, we have to, to detour, we have to do something with that. So on the, on the left side, this is the IMS chair that most of you knows. And I, dis, I determined this chair by having the body with the design of the chair on, on earth. And the other one is a stool by uh, Mark Newson, I think in, in copper. And it's, it's like um, Fakir cushion. And this is a stool by Alto that we did on by deconstructed it and repainted as a piece of art. And this is, and we designed the handle. So this is a little scale that is fitting to your hand. And it's not easy when you're an architect to start designing this little object because this is so small and so into your hand, not only around your body as we are when we do project or big buildings or urban planning, but this one going to the scale of the hand is something very particular. And I work on that with models, with playing with models, with past textile until I find the right, the fitting object that I, have, I want to have in, into my hand. And I play with colors and I will show you some colors, some, some, because everybody is, per, is persuaded that I'm playing only with black, sometimes with red but I can play with more than that. You know, you have some red and orange and yellow. This is in the cafe of the macro in Rome. And this is the color that I have used for the renovation of a bubble house in the south of France done by Auntie Lovag for a family. And this is not the palais bulle that everybody knows. This is the first one that Auntie Lovag did before. And this family asked me to renovate the house. And I used 12 colors all together, mixing them like that, like that. And playing with color for creating a kind of a pop uh, space when this house has been built in the, during the 60s and the 70s. This is the color of the interior of the auditorium in Rome. This is fully, fully red. Everything is red. Everything has been painted in red to be to be to be really that heart of the museum. These are toilets. One toilet on the on the right, a staircase in the left, and this is the, the one in the in the in the left has been colored in '95 when I did a, a university a library for university in Nantes, and it's why when I try I started to play with a lot of colors together, mixing colors without playing only with black and white. And on the right, this is the toilets that in an office building overlooking to the, to the city outside and playing with colors. And this is a, a lift in my last building in Barcelona, a tower. And this is the toilets in Rome. And the toilets in Rome are not only colors because this is, you see it as black and white, and especially the white of this, of the 
glass cube, so the glass pipe effect, which is a place where you want to, you go to wash your hands, but it becomes red when you start to have the, la the water coming up and you play with uh, uh, an infrared ray and you have the, the dryer, you have the water coming up and it becomes red. And I play also, I, I play because I, you know, for me, architecture is not a, it's a serious thing that we have to do with pleasure. And this is why I always, I always say I play this. So I use that and I and experiment a lot. So this is for toilets. I love to design toilets because toilets is a place in architecture where nobody asks you regulation. Nobody gives you regulation. You have to fulfill a space, a size, ventilation, a bit of light, and nobody asks you anything else. So for me, it's a place where I can experiment. And I experiment with light, I experiment with reflection, with distortion, with, uh, with materials to organize the space and to have the possibility for people to, to enjoy the space and start and give away, go away with smiling because they have played. This is a toilet in the museum in Rennes, in Brittany, in France. And this is an installation, and uh, I do also art installation, and this one was an ensayak. In 2011, it was a, a space that I built into the exhibition space, but the space is not a regular space. It's, uh, it's a regular space when you look at the design and the drawing, because this is for a triangle equilateral in plan, but the walls are not vertical and the walls are covered with mirrors, because I wanted to experiment the reflection and the distortion of the perception of the space into mirrors. So you see doors, but it's a reflection of a door, of a passage, and you, this is not a real one. You don't know where are the limit between the floor and the walls. This is totally confusing, but this is also experimentation. Experimentation for experimenting the space and also for the people, for the visitor, to experiment the, the way they behave, the way their body is inside these spaces. And this is an art gallery in Paris where I was also using glasses and mirrored and uh, uh, installing them in different ways with light to demultiply the perception, to change the perception of what is usual in the space in the art gallery. And this is in a garden, in the festival of gardens that we have in France every year. And this one where they ask for colors and I did a thick black garden by experimenting with black glass, sheets of glass, where the light and the sun is playing a lot. And with powder, tire powder in the floor to absorb the sound. And this is a very silentious space where the sun is really, really talking a lot with the reflection into the glass. And uh, in uh, the last office building that I delivered two years ago, in the staircases, I have I designed the staircases as greenhouse, where we have the green down, and in, as soon as you go up, thanks to the serigraphy and the solar cells that we implanted into the facade, the west facade, we play. I played with the light and the light playing the sun, which is coming into through this facade, is playing with the, inside the space and transforms the perception of the space, depending on the quantity of sun and the staircase is, becomes a, a place to experiment and a place to enjoy how to go up and down and how to meet people into the staircase. This is another place in Lyon in an offices building, the headquarters of G11. And this is a landing of the two, two lifts in a column, which is a steel structure, where the cell structure, the cell, the solar cells in the glass roof above, and the light in through the lift, is playing with the space and and uh, give a lot of brightness through the space. It was the first time when I did the the Banque Populaire de l'Ouest in France in in Brittany. It was 1990, and it was. Uh, how to, to, to experiment with the perception of a space, which is quite narrow, but very long, because it's 50 meters long and very narrow. 
And uh, thanks to the transparency of the glass, the total transparency of the glass seen from outside, but we, we, that becomes reflective when you approach the glass and you have the space which is demultiplied because of the shadow, because of the structure which is outside, you don't know what is exactly the shape of the side of the space. You don't know the form of the space and the reflection and the light is transforming the perception of everything. Again, this is in Lyon, in the headquarter, where the light inside, the, the multiple layers of the facade, which is three, three layers of glass, and uh, the reflection and the flying and the sun and the image that is the photo that has been installed by an artist into the first laminated glass outside, you don't perceive precisely how it is. We have the impression that there are many, many, many layers, but it's only three layers. And the first one is a laminated glass. It's a photo inside. And I also like cantilevers. So this long cantilever is 25 meters long with four floors above plus a terrace. And this is seven meters high. And this is a place where the, all the offices of the part, this part of the offices building has been pushed out of the building and suspended to a very huge steel structure on the, on the last floor. And when you walk under the cantilever volume, thanks to the part of the ceiling, which is transparent, you can look through the building, like looking under the, the dress of a woman. I'm sorry, this is not politically correct. I know, but this is really the idea to look underneath. This is an art piece that I did in an art gallery in 2007, which is a play, uh, uh, the experimenting of the, what I call the dynamic equilibrium. Because this, the beam, in between the two balloons is six meters long. And the size and the section of this beam is six centimeters by six centimeters. The little balloon is a balloon of aluminum filled with sand. The big one is a balloon, the air balloon. So the weight of the weight of the air balloon is something, but it's at five meters distance of the column. And the little one is very close to the column, but to make the equilibrium without touching the floor, we had at the end to fill the, the, the balloon with the sun grain by grain to reach the horizontal and it's there. And it's just one beam above a pillar without any, connect, any fixed connection. So when you pass by the big balloon, because this is air, it's, it seems to be moving and it moves a little bit, but it moves a little bit. So because it moves a little bit, you see that this equilibrium is really unstable, it's at the limit of equilibrium. Suspended, suspending um, spaces, uh, it's like that. For example, in, a, in a, another uh, office building that I did in Paris, this is a meeting room which is suspended above the entrance lobby. And the entrance lobby is black and, and white, as you can see it. But the, the meeting room above is a red balloon. It's a red bubble. And this red bubble, it's a meeting room. And this is another one. And this is the, this building. And this building is black on one side, white on the other side. And the side facade is black and white. This is why from when we started to build this building, I decided to do everything black and white, except the suspended meeting rooms, which will be red. As you can see, this is red and black and white. When you have the place, uh, the, the landing floor for the lifts and inside the meeting room, which are bubbles, the form and the shape is particular. The, the shape of the table, of the meeting table is also particular. And even the carpet has been designed with part of bubbles. This is the opera, the restaurant of the opera that doesn't exist anymore. But this is a place where I was really playing with curls, trying to organize space to create a new floor in a space where it was totally forbidden for me to touch anything from the wall, the cupola, and the pillars. So I had to play with curving around, sinuousing around, 
and having the, the space that slide into the, the, under the cupola as a phantom. This is why I called it the phantom of the apparel. I do lighting sometimes also. So, and the lighting is, this is a, a suspension of one meter and a half size. And this is an inverse suspended lighting because usually when you have the lighting which is suspended above your table, the light is coming down. But this light is not coming down. It's coming down, but after having been up and using the form and the shape of the, of the lamp itself as a, as a transfer for having the, a, a more smooth, a more, a more, a more light light going down, not a direct light, but an indirect light. And this is why it's like the moon, which is suspended in front of the sun. Playing with also using the re re reconstructing or playing with sinuous line of a site, of a landscape. And this is the first time that I was doing that in 2004 for a competition for a pavilion in Paris. Destroying a, a hill in a little place in a in a little in a city in the suburb where I had to establish the pavilion and rebuilding that with with um, sinuous uh, structure and textile uh, covered by textile and it was a project that it, I, I won but it has not been because the, the exhibition has been cancelled and then when I did the competition for the museum in Austria for in the in the fabulous in a fabulous landscape close in the mountains, I decided not to establish a building above the hill where I had to establish a museum, but to play with the sinuous line and to lift them and to insert the museum underneath and just to reconstruct or to rebuild the landscape that is going above the museum. And this one has not been built, but this one, which is in China, in Nanjing, it's an archaeological museum in, in uh, close to Nanjing. I, I played a, a, again with the continuous the contour lines of the landscape and those mountains until a little model that we built with cardboard and until the building itself, which is coming coming from the mountains, being, being part of the landscape, and the landscape is reinvaded the museum above to mix and to create uh, in, no, no separation, but continuity between the building of the museum and the landscape itself and the mountain. This is for a competition in Cyprus. It was for a museum. And in, I like promenade. I like to travel building. I like to not being static and having experimenting buildings by traveling and walking and being surprised but every perspective that I can discover through this promenade. This is why in the macro in Rome I have proposed between the roof that I've created and the, and the ground floor to create a new layer which is a mid-level level layer where with the passerelles with the, uh, the, the space above the auditorium in the center of the space this is a place for traveling the museum and traveling in between the two layers of the roof and the, and the floor and having a third promenade to discover what happens around. Being under the glass roof and in between. And this is another museum in Rennes where the promenade that this time is vertical because this is a very narrow building and this is a very narrow space, but very high because it's coming, it's becoming, it's coming from eight meters below the ground to 20 meters above the ground. That means nearly 30 meters high. And this is a travel with ramps and staircase and paths to have a vertical promenade to choose and to be, to decide where to go on both sides of this vertical promenade. Sometimes it's a stair that I, as I said before, or ramps as I showed you before. And in Nanjing, in the museum, the promenade is also vertical, but it's much particular because this is a round surface, a round void, 
creating in the middle in the space in the in the in the slab of the first floor and sliding a little bit this one at different each floor that is not the same exactly and having not the, the the lift or the escalators on both sides but having it inside the void to travel the, the void the empty space or the atrium to be able to travel around to turn around the space around the void and creating a promenade vertical by going the, with the elevator escalators, turning around the space, taking the new escalator, turning around the space. And when doing that, having the possibility in the meantime at each level to, to understand what is happening on each, uh, on each level of, as exhibition and to decide where to go. So this is a place for, for visitors to, to decide where to go to visit the building. And this is a proposal that we did for a competition for a library in, I don't remember where it was, another one. And this is another one. And this is one in South Korea, but never, that, never finished. And it was a big competition for cultural center. And I twist sometimes building and I do little buildings. This is in the Alps, in close to Grenoble. This is a twisted wooden building house, um, artist residence, close to a little castle where the art, which is belonging to the art collector and the art collector wanted to create an artist residence. And thanks to the fact that we were on a hill and there were little trees, I decided to climb above the trees and to twist the volume to offer at the top a belvedere for the artists which were working on the bottom living in the middle and having the Belvedere on the top, overlooking the Alps and the horizon of the mountains. And in the building that is called The Twist, which is uh, an, uh, an office building in Paris, I twisted again the entrance volume, the first volume on the boulevard, because I discovered when I was visiting the site that thanks to these bridges that we have on both sides, because this is in between two bridges, and because the boulevard is doing a turn, I wanted, I discovered that from one side and to the other side, and from each side, we have the impression that the building is over the bridges. So I wanted to twist it to, to create facade on both sides. This is an art installation, like a kind of a perspective with plastic and with plastic tubes to create an, an impression of twisting. I go fast. This is a twisted bank uh, counter and twisted seats, twisted ball, twisted stool. And uh, the, my last building that I'm delivering now in Barcelona, housing tower, which is a bit twisted with the balconies that I have had on the structure, which is not regular, but very large balconies with an entrance which is 10 meters high, with inside the chandelier that I did with all the javelots that I've created for Zoo Chaplin, with 25 javelots, but thanks to the, trans to the mirror ceiling, we have the impression that the chandelier is doubled and higher. And when you go up, this is my last two image, a two swimming pool on the top floor at the 100, level, uh, 100 meters above the ground, overlooking the sea, there is an infinite pool. And when you go up, you discover you have the impression that the sea and the, the pool are in continuity. And in the basement, there is another one, which is under the ramp going to the car park. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adil. Beautiful.